Mauna Loa and Kilauea Volcano latest on the Big Island. Hawaii Volcano Observatory alerts. Pahala deep quakes. We've had a, a tremendous uptick in earthquakes in Mauna Loa lately. We also have the alerts coming from Hawaii Volcano Observatory. And let's remember that we also have water in the crater of Kilauea. And this could cause explosive eruptions because of one magma column dropping be below the water table, two groundwater interacting with the hot rocks, and three steam pressure building and then exploding. This is, for example, what happened with the White Island volcano on the North Island of New Zealand on December 9. It was, unex it was not expected, even though they had an uptick in earthquakes, but that island was so low-lying that it had water interacting, turning to steam, and it had to explode to release itself. Now, according to the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, the weekly update for Mauna Loa, we know Mauna Loa is yellow code, and uh, this is dated February 6. Activity, Mauna Loa is not erupting. Rates of deformation and seismicity have not changed significantly over the past week and remain above long-term background levels. During the past week, HVO seismometers recorded 134 small magnitude earthquakes beneath the upper elevations of the volcano. We know that the Mauna Loa is the biggest volcano, above Earth volcano in the world. 134 small magnitude earthquakes beneath the upper elevation. The strongest was 2.4 earthquakes February 3rd. Most earthquakes occurred at shallow depths of less than 5 kilometers or 3 miles beneath the volcano's surface, unlike what's happening in Pahala, which are very deep. Now, also, the uh, Mauna Loa global positioning system, the GPS measurements, show continued slow summit inflation, consistent with magma supply to the volcano's shallow storage system. Gas concentration at the sulfur cone monitoring site on the southwest rift zone remains stable. Fumarole temperatures, as measured at both sulfur cone and the summit, have not changed significantly. And we know Mauna Loa is the largest volcano on our planet, rising 13,681 feet above sea level. Its long submarine flanks descend about three miles below sea level to the ocean floor. And the ocean floor directly beneath, beneath Mauna Loa is in turn depressing, depressed by the volcano's great mass another five miles down. And this places Mauna Loa's summit about 50, 56,000 feet above its base. The enormous volcano covers half of the island of Hawaii. Eruptions typically start at the summit, and within minutes to months of eruption onset, about half of the eruptions migrate either uh, northeast or southwest drift zone. Since 1843, the volcano has erupted 33 times, with intervals between eruptions ranging from months to decades. And Mauna Loa last erupted 35 years ago in 1984. The eruptions tend to produce voluminous, fast-moving lava flows, as we saw in Kilauea. They were about 18 miles an hour. That can impact communities on the east and west sides of the island of Hawaii. Since the mid-19th century, the city of Hilo in East Hawaii has been threatened by uh, Mauna Loa uh, lava flows. They've reached the south and west coasts of the island eight times. 1859, 1868, 1887, 1926, 1919, and three times in 1950. Now we will take away, the takeaway for this is the fact that it is deforming, it's inflating, meaning that the slow inflation is because of the consistent magma supply to the volcano's storage system. And we have to go into Kilauea now. We know that Kilauea, Mauna Loa, and Loihi, the seamount south of Kilauea, share the same magma chamber as to the same magma underneath this, the uh, big island of Hawaii, supplying all three of these volcanoes. Now, the uh, February 6, the uh, advisory, the alert for Kilauea, it's not erupting, of course. Monitoring data for January show variable rates of seismicity and ground deformation, low rates of sulfur dioxide emissions, the only minor geologic change since the end of the eruptive activities is uh, of uh, 2018. Of course, we know that it, the change since then is the fact that it has a lake that's growing in the, in the crater 
the Crater Lake. Rates of seismicity over the month were variable but without long-term veils. Sulfur dioxide emission rates are low at the summit and are below detected limits of Puoo at the lower East Rift Zone. The lake, the little pond at the bottom of Halimamau Crater, which began forming July 25th of 2019, continues to expand and it deepens. As of early February, the dimensions are 95 meters, about 300 feet, by 194, about 600 feet, or about 310 feet by 640 feet, and the current depth is about 82 feet deep, 25 meters. So it's pretty big. Now, over the past month, eight deflation inflation DI events occurred beneath the summit, slightly less than the prior month. Since early March 2019, GPS stations and tilt meters at Kilauea summit recorded deformation consistent with slow magma accumulation within the shallow portion of the Kilauea summit magma system, one to two kilometers, approximately or one mile below ground level. During January, deformation rates at Kilauea summit appeared to have decreased somewhat. Gas measurements show continuing low levels of sulfur dioxide consistent with no significant shallowing of magma. Some amount of sulfur dioxide is being dissolved into the summit lake. Work continues to try and quantify this process. Farther east, GPS stations and tilt meters continue to show motion consistent with slowing, slowed refilling of the deep East Rift Zone magmatic reservoir in the broad, broad region between Puo and the Highway 130. During January, deformation rates in this region appear to have decreased somewhat. Monitoring data do not suggest any imminent change in volcanic hazard for the area. In addition to motion along the East Rift Zone, the south flank of Kilauea continues to creep towards the sea. At elevated rates, following May 4, 2018, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake near Kalapana. So it's still uh, creeping seaward, and that's something that uh, is quite serious, because uh, if it breaks off, it could cause um, a tidal wave. Now, HVO continues to carefully monitor all data streaming from Kilauea East Rift Zone and South Flank for important changes. Although not currently erupting, areas of persistent elevated ground temperatures and minor release of gases are still found in the vicinity of the 2018 Lower East Rift Zone fissures. These include steam and very small amounts of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. These conditions are expected to be long-term and similar conditions followed the 1955 eruption, which continued for years to decades. Hazards remain in the Lower East Rift Zone and at Kilauea Summit. Residents and visitors near the 2018 fissures and lava flows and summit collapses areas should heed Hawaii County Civil Defense and National Park warnings. Lava flows and features created by the 2018 eruption are primarily on private property and persons are asked to be respectful not to enter the park or private property. And as uh, we know, Hawaii Volcano Observatory continues to closely monitor geologic changes and seismicity deformation and gas emissions for any sign of increased activity at Kilauea. As of uh, June 25, 2019, Kilauea Volcano has been at normal green. And uh, let's go take a look at the uh, deformation and the uh, earthquakes as well. This graph shows the size of the earthquakes and the depths. As you can see, the ones that are, are blue and purple are around Pahala, towards the 5, 6 o'clock position. And we'll take a look at them together. Those are very deep, and they're deep uh, towards the um, uh, trunk that goes towards the magma chamber, whereas the ones around Kilauea and Mauna Loa are much more shallow, as you can see. I'm at Berkeley. And um, these are today's quakes are the blue, and the past hour are the red. Mona Loa, as you can see, is right here, and uh, Kilauea, and this is Hilo. This is the uh, flank that is um, slipping towards the sea, okay? This is where we have the Pahala earthquakes, as you can see, for the past, you know, year or so. Uh, it's really picked up most of the, the activity. And we know that they are deep earthquakes compared to the shallower earthquakes 
in uh, Mauna Loa and Kilauea. Okay, this one's 3.9. This one is uh, not that shallow, surprisingly. Where is the other one that we saw? This one is not that shallow. Okay, but all these are very deep here. That's even deeper. And this is the Loihi Seamount right here, this area here. And going back to uh, Kilauea, the monitoring. Okay, here we are again. So everything is normal, um, except for the very deep earthquakes in uh, Pahala. This is the past hour, two magnitude, 20 mile steps, as you can see. Uh, so there's a lot of activity there. It's, of course, the biggest volcano in, on the world. Mauna Loa, of course, as we said before, is fed by the same magma chamber. And the deformation, you can take a look at the graphs. There we go. This was the eruption of last year, and then it deflated, and you can see that it has an uptick in inflation. There we go. And it's filling up, of course, with magma. Okay. The distance between the two global position system stations located on opposite sides of Kilauea Caldera, the rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or Puoo magma storage chamber. Above Puoo GPS, change in distance between the two stations, a rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir, as we said. Of course, it's filling up. And uh, we'll keep an eye on this. And multimedia shows us, of course, the pond, the crater pond. If you look at these two dots here, one here and one here, these are the same ones here. You can see that the distance is closing up because it's growing. It's about 300 some odd by 600 some odd feet. 310 by 640, 82 feet depth. And it's growing and it's very hot, of course. I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.